Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on this Japanese black pine. It uh, was a tree that I imported and sold to a customer about a year ago. Now I'm going to be doing some seasonal work on it. It is in very late autumn or early winter. Um, so this work ideally should have been done, uh, should have been completed uh, a few weeks ago, I would have preferred. So the scope of the work that, I've, uh, that I'd like to complete today is to thin the tree out. And that is going to entail predominantly uh, removing uh, a, a growth where you have more than two uh, shoots at one, at one point. And uh, then also some of the, because the tree was imported, we allowed it to grow without decandling it just to make sure that it had sufficient energy. Um, but obviously if we allow the tree to then uh, push new spring candles in the growing season, will, which will take place later this year, um, the problem is that you're obviously then going to get extremely long extensions and uh, this tree is not in development, it is in refinement and so that'll be a problem. So I'm planning on essentially decandling the tree now as well. Um, and then what will happen is that in spring, uh, well, between now and spring, new buds will form at, at the cut sites and uh, that will then, those buds will then develop into the spring candles. Uh, then I'll also be thinning some of the needles just to help balance the energy uh, on the tree. Um, of course, uh, pines are apically dominant and so the idea would be to pull more needles in the apical area um, so that uh, greater growth is, is promoted in the lower branches of the tree just to, as I say, balance the energy and that will give you a more even needle length throughout the tree and um, also will affect the strength of the candles that develop in spring. So let me point out some of the things that I'll be doing uh, and showing you, demonstrating to you as I go along. So this is a, uh, an idea of this excessively vigorous growth um, that you can see here that I need to resolve. And uh, the problem with this, of course, is that as this tree is in refinement, if this growth, the growth that you have towards the, the outline of the tree or the silhouette um, needs to become progressively uh, more delicate as you reach that outline. And um, so by allowing candles to develop like this, you get a very coarse growth. So the goal now would be to try and cut back into, into the tree and uh, hopefully to use uh, a back budding or to use rather to use growth that is further back on the branch to then uh, replace the section that ideally can, would, be need, it would need to be removed. You will notice that around this tree you've got some needles that are turning brown. Um, this is not something to be concerned about. Uh, these are probably three-year-old needles and uh, they would naturally be shed by the tree. And uh, so this is not a disease or anything that's wrong with the tree. It's perfectly normal, Don't, nothing to be worried about. And uh, obviously those will just be removed and, and just to clean, clean up, the, uh, up the foliage. Here we have a fantastic example of a candle that's been allowed to extend uh, in summer or through, throughout the summer period so it wasn't, it wasn't decandled. And at the base of that candle we have a bud. So this bud is going to push in spring. So by removing this candle, we very uh, we can be assured that we are going to get some growth here. But at other cut sites where there aren't perhaps buds, they, uh, new buds will need to develop. But this one is extremely safe, so we can just go in and using a sharp pair of trimming scissors, cut that and be sure that the cut is made perfectly perpendicular to the candle. Uh, because this will ensure that equal sides of the cut get the even amount of uh, sap pressure or sap. In this way, you more reliably are going to get buds forming on opposite sides of the cut. If there's an angle to the, to the cut, it's going to form at the crest. The bud is more likely to form at the crest of the candle or at the crest of the cut site. Yeah, we have a good example where you have three shoots coming from the same point. So I need to, that, that's a bad, uh, you shouldn't keep more than two. Um, otherwise, you're going to find reverse swelling occurring um, just below that point. So I'm going to cut out the strongest one, um, leaving two weaker ones. So 
So I'm going to carry on decandling the entire tree from the top to the bottom. And once that's done, I'm going to then thin the needles. So I've completed uh, decandling the tree and now I'm going to be pulling the needles, as I mentioned earlier, just thinning them, reducing the number of needles uh, throughout the tree. Probably going to be looking at um, uh, probably six, uh, eight, so six needle, pairs of needles at the top of the tree and eight pairs of needles at the bottom. When you talk about, or when I talk about uh, pairs of needles, it means um, as, as you've got, as a Japanese black pine, which this is a Japanese black pine, um, it is a two needle pine. So it means that at every, in every needle cluster, there are two needles. So when we talk about pairs of needles, you're talking about the two needles itself um, as, as, as one. So if you talk about six pairs of needles, you're actually having 12 individual needles, but you're only counting uh, in this case six in the top and you always want to needle pluck from the back to the to the point or to the end and try and get um, an, sort of an even in di distribution around uh, the growth of needles. And the, the amount of needles that you leave behind is going to come down to experience uh, the more needles you remove, uh, it means that there's going to be less sap, sap flowing into that area, and uh, so you're going to get smaller needles, weaker growth. So you don't want to go too, you don't want to remove too many needles because obviously then your needles are going to be very, very short, and it's not healthy for the tree uh, in the long to you know to do that repeatedly. If you do it by mistake, uh, once or twice, it's not a problem. The tree can recover from that. But if you do it every time, it will weaken, uh, progressively become weaker and uh, you may start losing branches. Sometimes you'll get uh, an area or a branch that has particularly long needles. Um, now it's and it maybe it just sticks out from the profile of the pad or of the tree. And in a case like that, you can just group the needles together and then using a sharp pair of trimming scissors, just cut the needles uh, shorter. Um, this does not affect the amount of needles that you need to remove. Um, so if you were removing or if you were keeping six pairs or eight pairs or 10 pairs, whatever you were keeping, um, you don't keep more or less as a result of cutting the needles. The cutting of the needles is just from really just as a as an aesthetic uh, thing in this case, um, but it also does allow more light into the structure of the branch, um, uh, where you you know because at the moment that you are getting these longer needles as a result of uneven energy balance, uh, or that the bal the energy is not balanced. Um, so perhaps at this area there were very strong candles. Um, and as a result, uh, you got very long needles as well. So it's fine just to cut those needles shorter, but ultimately the goal, of course, um, in refinement, particularly would be that your needles will be all the same length and that you wouldn't have to cut the needles at all. Sometimes when you're going through thinning of the tree, uh, you'll find uh, branch or branchlets or growth coming out uh, where you've got three, three points of growth and um, so you need to eliminate one to get it back down to two. If you don't do that, then you get uh, swelling in that area, uh, sort of a reverse taper. Um, so which one to select? Um, you're going to remove the one that is growing up uh, or the, the, in, the, in the least desirable angle or at the least desirable angle. And in this case, this one, which is growing straight up, so anything that's growing up or straight down or back into the tree would be removed. And uh, in this case, it's going to be this one. And so we're just going to cut it off right at the base and uh, leave two behind. So if you did work, as I suggested, from the top to the bottom, then by the time you finish um, pulling needles from the tree, the tree will be clean. So in other words, you won't have to go back and really remove needles because you would have removed them as you worked uh, from the top to the bottom of the tree. As this work was being done in autumn, 
This is the time that the tree puts on girth uh, and uh, including on the branches. And uh, as the tree was previously wired, I need to make sure that there's no severe wire bite in any areas. Um, in those places that I find it, I need to remove the wire. Um, but otherwise, if there's just a slight wire bite, I'll keep an eye on it, um, particularly in spring when the new candles, the spring candles develop, um, because it, it, the, the, the branches do thicken up again at that point in time. But I would, re, re, I would um, allow the wire to remain on if the wire bite is only slight at the moment, because um, you, you do need to allow almost the wire bite, a little bit of wire bite as an indication of when the branch is then being set in that position. The first uh, area of severe wire bite that I can find is yeah in the apical, um, well the extension of the trunk line really, so it's the apex and this wire is biting in quite, quite uh, heavily now so this wire will need to be removed. Um, and I will do so with the combination of wire cutters as, pli as well as pliers. The wire bite over here is pretty much borderline. I would say you could actually leave it a bit longer, um, but just for demonstration purposes, I want to show you removing this wire. And as I mentioned with the previous example, I'm using a combination of wire cutters as well as uh, pliers. Um, and the difference between the wire cutters for bonsai is that it has this very stubby um, front which allows you to get very close up to the wire to the branch and cut the wire off so let me just demonstrate that to you as well so some, sometimes it's possible to remove um, wire by unwinding it uh, but in the case of wire bite it's better that you um, uh, that you use a combination so in other words you're going to um, use the pliers to rem to, uh, to unwind the wire on uh, so take removing it from the groove that's been created as it but in and then you will cut it off so there you can see the wire bite that remains um, over here it's not too severe and that'll very quickly heal over but you don't want it to get much worse than that and uh, so as I mentioned you're able to just get right up to the branch with the bonsai wire cutter and cut and it will um, sever the wire and then you can obviously con you can just make um, several cuts and remove the wire um, as as you cut it in sections Just to sum up the work that I did, I decandled the tree and uh, then I also thinned the amount of needles at each terminal and I used six pairs of needles in fact um, throughout, the, throughout the tree just to balance the energy. Um, so in other words what that means is that in spring the buds that develop at each terminal uh, or at each cut site uh, where, it, where the tree was decandled the buds should be more or less the same size and of course then develop uh, more or less evenly in strength and that will give you more or less even needles throughout the tree. Um, so once I'd uh, reduced the amount of needles I also well at the same time I was thinning it so where I had branchlets um, that exceeded two at any particular point 
um, at any juncture of the branch. So in the ramification, if I had three um, or more, then I would reduce it to two. And the ones that were reduced or removed were the ones that were growing either vertically or down, straight down, uh, or back into the tree. Um, and uh, those were removed in favor of, uh, of growth that was better positioned. And uh, after that, just went through the tree to look for um, wire bite and then uh, removed, uh, removed the wire that was biting in quite severely. Uh, I would caution you to not remove wire too early, so do allow some wire bite. Uh, the reason for that is that if you remove the wire too prematurely, the branches will largely return to the positions they were before you wired them. Um, and then you'd have to rewire them and uh, position them again. Um, so obviously just waste a bit of time and of course the wire. So leave them on for a little bit longer. You can check them again in spring or late spring after the, um, after the spring push and the candles have started to thicken, but just don't touch, uh, just don't touch them or don't touch those branches until the needles have hardened off because, uh, because they will be damaged quite easily while they're still very, uh, very juvenile. Um, they can be bent or broken very, very easily. Um, so yeah, hope that uh, this was uh, beneficial for you, got some um, information from it, some useful information. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please do and uh, do like and subscribe uh, to my channel. And I think also just click the notification bell to make sure that you do get updates uh, when I post new videos, which is uh, typically on a Friday afternoon. So thanks very much for watching and uh, till next time, take care, goodbye.